DC doing another quick quick doing another quick video here today. Um, I just want to start like a series of appreciations where I focus on one artist or group or band or whatever. There's a lot that I sort of don't know how much has been talked about in the VC that I wanted to sort of highlight. And on this one, this first one, it's Kevin Ayers of Soft Machine early on and then uh, his own solo work for a bunch of years. If you don't know, English uh, started out with the Soft Machine and a few other projects early on, mainly the Soft Machine playing um, guitar and the earliest lineup of Soft Machine. I have some Soft Machine records here I'll show. Of course, this beautiful gimmick cover. Um, this is Kevin here. He was playing guitar, and David Allen in the beginning was playing bass. And I believe he would play bass and guitar with the Soft Machine. And you had Mike Ratledge on keyboards, and um, of course Robert Wyatt on drums and vocals. But Kevin and Robert, I think, wrote a lot of the songs. Um, well, actually on this album, they all were, they, yeah, they were all writing. Um, but David Allen, who had gone to perform Gong, was just on the very first single. But Kevin Ayers was one of the key members in this band, but he was gone after this one. I don't know, I think it was amicable because the Soft Machine members would play on Kevin Ayers' solo work, but... Um, I have some other Soft Machine here. Volume 2, which he's not on, but... And then there's this, sort of alternate early recordings. It's called Wonderland. This features David Allen playing, on, or David Allen on some of these songs. Let me show this real quick. Um, yeah, Kevin Ayers playing organ on, uh, on guitar, bass, and vocals, it says on most of these tracks. Bass and vocals. But this is, I think it's an unofficial record on Secret, the Secret label. Uh, but this is, this is cool, like sort of early alternate recordings to what Soft Machine is doing. But Kevin Ayers, great voice, very deep voice, similar to a little bit, sort of like a Sim, Sid Barrett vibe, but much deeper. Um, it's, you know, he would start making his own solo records that got to a whole, uh, just started merging jazz rock and experimental, a little bit of prog, but I think, I think still psychedelia and, you know, in singer songwriter mode. Um, he, uh, he did few solo records. He started a group called Kevin, I'll show the records. Let's just show the records. But Kevin Ayers was a, a you know, a key figure in British psychedelia in the late sixties. Um, like I said, with that voice, and he really was a part of that key lineup in Soft Machine, and started making some great solo records, um, with the first one being Joy of a Toy. This is the U.S. version on Harvest. There's Kevin. And uh, this has got some amazing songs on it. It's sort of, like I said, it, it, it always borders on art rock. A little bit of prog, a little bit of jazz rock, but you know, he was really going with the psychedelic whimsy. Like the song for Insane Times is, I believe, on this one. Nope, wrong. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. There it is. I was right. Um, but the Joy of a Toy is a Soft Machine song, and it starts off this uh, Joy of a Toy continued. Uh, Stop This Train is a real great psych track. Funny got the fellas in the hall. Mainly Kevin, with some help. Robert Wyatt, who played okay. Robert Wyatt played all the drums except for "Stop This Train" and "Ola Badong." Uh, and then you have Mike Ratledge and Hugh Hopper, who would join the Soft Machine at this point, also on this. But this is mainly a Kevin Ayers affair. And uh, if you don't know it, check it out. Uh, really prime slice of British psychedelia and sort of art rock. And uh, again, his voice just sort of carries everything. I love his arrangements. They, you know, it's nothing. It always takes a different turn than you're expecting. Um, and this is appreciation for Kevin Ayers. Just want to, I don't know. People talk about Kevin Ayers out there. I haven't seen it. The next album he would do, he would find a young Mike Oldfield and start this band called uh, Kevin Ayers and the Whole 
wide world. And Kevin Ayers, or um, Mike Oldfield, I think at this point was like 17 or 18. And I think this also had David Allen in it and Lal Coxel, I believe, is, believe it is. And uh, Kevin, of course, a few other people. This was sort of a, a one-off group. I think they toured a little bit and uh, broke up. But it was, yeah, David Bedford also, Lal Coxel, Mick Fincher, Mike Oldfield. And this is the original on Harvest. This, again, continues in that mode, but gets a little bit more out there. It's strange. Harvest label. I didn't show the other one, but that's a U.S. Harvest. The Joy of the Toy. This is Bridget St. John doing like a great duet, sort of. Uh, sort of a more acoustic track, which is called uh, the, the, the Oyster and the Flying Fish. With Bridget St. John, another great English folk, folk rock singer. An oyster was a traveling along the ocean road. He'd been some time preparing, and now he'd left the fold. He was sick of being. She's just on that one track, I believe. Uh, but it's a great song, and she has a super deep voice, like a Nico Kesos, or like a Nico type voice. And her and Kevin together singing, it's a beautiful song. But this is just called Shooting at the Moon. And, uh, yeah, Mike Oldfield on this is real good. His, his guitar playing is excellent. It's, it's, you know, I have a thing about guitars in sight, but it's like showy, but it's strange and different and interesting. Take a look around. Kevin's songs on this are fantastic. After that, we get another one more, like it's even stranger, which is just called Whatever She Brings, We Sing. And this is this is actually like the first reissue um, textured cover. This is from 1972. The last one was 1970. It's a great gatefold British style sleeve. And this is a, a, yeah, it's the second. You can always tell with the Harvest labels at this time if it was got the EMI box there. That's a second. If it doesn't have an EMI, it's the first, depending on which press you have or which record we're talking about. But this is from 1972. And this one gets, um, it goes out there, as I said. There's some, again, the jazzy, the jazzy moments and the prog moments are there. But it's like more like prog like symptoms as I like to say, and it doesn't like go full prog or anything. It stays in the art rock and singer songwriter mode. Um, I guess Mike Oldfield played on this as well. Let's see, Kevin Ayers, his vocals, guitar, bass, piano. David Bedford is back on. Yeah, this is basically a lot of the members from shooting, shooting, shooting at the moon and the whole in the whole world. Robert Wyatt is back singing on some of this. that there. But I love them, by the way, the UK sleeves. Sort of thin and flimsy, but something about them. The te the, they're, a lot of times they're textured and or laminated. So this is a great record. Margaret, you're such a magical child. I found that the first time you smiled. And these records are, they were U.S. pressings on some of them, but not all of them. This one in Shooting at the Moon, there was not. You can find them. They're out there. This one was, was one that was pressed multiple times in the U.S. on Sire. This is Banana Amour, and this one he was going for more, I don't want to say pop, but more singer-songwriter, more commercial-ish. Here he is. I believe that's Mike Radledge. I think. I could be wrong. Um, this you have all sorts of people on it. Robert Wyatt again is back. Steve Hillage, right? He plays lead guitar on a great song called Shouting in a Bucket Blues. And Mike Radledge is on this as well. 
Um, but that song, Shouting in the Bucket Blues, is so good. You can look that one up. I'll try to insert that right now. Sometimes I get too drunk, feel so goddamn low. I have no place to go, no one to turn to. I think about your loving arms, where I'd like to be. But it's selfish as can be, and I know it. And if I'm sorry for myself, I'm sorry for you too. Cause I'm the same as you, and I'm burning. So I sing for everyone who feels there's no way out. Or maybe if you all shout, someone will hear you. I'll listen to them shout. Uh, this one is great. It's sort of, if you like the John Cale early 70 records, you'll love this. Um, some really cool stuff on here. Um, if you had the UK issue, there's like a big booklet that would come with it, which is pretty rare, I guess, but the US didn't have it. This is the US Sire copy. Early 70s Sire, 73. And Kevin Ayer is just continually making great songs, showcasing his voice. Um, again, Arrangements. The guy, the guy was just really talented. I just, I think in the, I think in the UK he got his due. And interestingly too is that the Soft Machine, that record was actually pretty widely available here. I think they recorded it in New York, and they did tour in New York. With Soft Machine, so they actually made it here, which a lot of, you can't say a lot of those English site groups. So I think there is some notoriety for Kevin Ayers here, but I just never seem to get talked about. So again, this was Banana Amour. That's that's the last of the studio records I have. I also have this Odd Ditties, which has a lot of great stuff from these early records that was not included. Particularly is um, Singing a Song in the Morning, which features Sid Barrett. Now, he's not credited here, but apparently he played guitar. And I think there's a version of that song that was released on the deluxe edition of Joy of a Toy that has his vocals as well, but apparently he's on it. I love the harvest level. Um, what else is on here? Yeah, it's mainly a few things from the late 70s, but it's mainly from 1970, 1971. Um, these are just songs that weren't included on some of these records. Um, but that, yeah, that song, Singing a Song in the Morning, is super catchy. So that's Kevin Ayers. Let me know if you guys are aware of him, if you like his records, if you like, you know, anything about him, if you don't know about him, you know, maybe, maybe he's, you know, widely known, I'm just not aware of it, but I feel like most of the soft machine, when you're not talking about soft machine, you get uh, people talking about Robert Wyatt, and for good reason, I love Robert Wyatt too, his career was incredible, and what he went through, of course, and his unique, strange music, and his vocals, again, similar to Kevin Ayers in terms of, you know, their approach to making music. So that's my appreciation for Kevin Ayers. I'm going to do more of these, just focus on a single artist. Check him out. I hope you're digging this stuff. Um, thanks again, VC, for supporting and checking it out. I've been having a good time doing it, enjoying watching all your videos, and thank you for commenting. Um, take care. Until next time.